Good day, folks, and welcome to the Anorak Review Show, with I, your host, the Anorak. It's been quite a while since I last covered anything solo by Steve Hackett. The only other time was, of course, all the way back in July 2021, when I reviewed his underrated 1981 album, Cured. In my previous episode, we looked at the Genesis album, and then there were three. The first album they produced and released after the departure of guitarist Steve Hackett. So I suppose that I should now also talk about the first album that he made after he left the band. Fitting, fitting enough, especially since this album was released very much soon after the aforementioned Genesis album. However, th what this is actually technically Steve's second solo album. In 1975, between The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway and A Trick of the Tail, he recorded and released Voyage of the Acolyte, a concept album loosely themed around tarot cards, which even features some contributions from fellow Genesis members Mike Rutherford and Phil Collins, and even Mike Oldfield's sister Sally Oldfield. And that pretty much makes Steve the first Genesis member to release a solo album, even before Peter Gabriel and his debut eponymous album, or simply Car, as it would come to be known as, from 1977, Tony Banks' A Curious Feeling from 1979, which I already brought up in my last episode, Mike Rutherford's Small Creeps Day from 1980, and Phil Collins' Face Value in 1981, which I'm sure many of you would remember me reviewing all the way back in 2021 or so. I'll probably review Voyage of the Acolyte and maybe even some of the other stuff I mentioned here at some point, but right now, let's talk about this record. So, does this album manage to stand well and prove Steve's songwriting and musical abilities even without the other Genesis members? Well, let's find out for ourselves as we jump into Steve Hackett's 1978 solo album, Please Don't Touch. The cover is interesting and quite humorous. Illustrated by Brazilian artist Kim Poor, Steve Haggard's then fiancé and soon-to-be wife, who would do most of Steve's album artworks for the tail end of the 70s, across the 80s and 90s and up to the mid-2000s. Featuring an old Victorian-style couple being attacked by what seemed to be various clockwork toys. Made funny since there's not, not one, but... Two signs warning and saying, please don't touch. And they really should have heeded the warning. It does certainly remind me of the classic Genesis album artworks of Trespass, Nursery Crime and Foxtrot by Paul Whitehead and the Hypnosis design cover for A Trick of the Tail. Having that old timey style along with a sense of dark humour. Anyways, now on to the music. We begin the album with Narnia, as we're immediately greeted by the enchanting folky guitar of Steve himself. Already it sets a rather otherworldly tone, a vibe that's both familiar and yet all its own. The song also features Steve Walsh and Phil Ehart of Kansas on lead vocals and drums respectively. Also very interesting how we ha now have two drummers named Phil. Hackett apparently liked the a cappella vocals on the song Carry On Wayward Son, and yeah, I, I can certainly agree with him on that. So he did make a good choice. Originally, this was considered to be a potential single, but the higher ups of Charisma felt that the listeners would mistake in this for a natural Kansas song. Though, wouldn't that be like confusing Philip Bailey's Easy Lover for a Jezza song? However, there was an alternate version of this track featuring vocals by guitarist John Perry of The Only Ones, which was made a single instead and even was made even eventually a bonus track for this album. But I'm talking about the original with Steve Walsh, so let's get back into that. The title itself, Narnia, is obviously named after the fictional setting of from C.S. Lewis's The Chronicles of Narnia book series, and there are even a few references in it within some of the lyrics here, such as, with a queen cold as ice, and she could turn you to stone, 
alluding to the White Witch and her power to, well, turn anyone into stone. And, we know you're a daughter of Eve and a friend of mine. Which is what any female human I usually refer to in Narnia. It's a bit like how Led Zeppelin would reference the Middle Earth stories like The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings in some of their songs like Bambalon, The Battle of Evermore and Misty Mountain Hop. The song is pretty much about childhood in general and the fantasies that we may have during our childhoods. It may not be as grandiose or hard rocking as Carry On Wayward Son, but Narnia is a fine good song and a pretty chill rocker in fact, as a lot of Steve Haggett's songs may be as we'll see in this album. Next is Carry Upon The Vicarage. And already it has a strange opening. Within the first 30 seconds, we're greeted with a musical box of sorts. Don't that remind you of something? As well as faint chipmunky voices speaking and singing what sounds like a really off-key version of Deck the Halls. It almost feels like we're trapped in some demented toy shop or carnival. Kind of like the actual album cover itself. Then all that surrealness gets wiped out by the incoming organ, chattering cymbals and lumpy guitar. Which does sound and feel a bit like classic Genesis. At least a bit reminiscent of something out of Wind and Wuthering. This is in fact the only song on this album to feature Steve Hackett himself on lead vocals. As opposed to maybe a bit of backing vocals here and there. However, his voice here is double tracked, with one being pitched up high and the other being pitched down low. As a result, it gives off this uncanny feeling to it, almost similar to something from The Lamb's Lies Down on Broadway, like The Grand Parade of Lifeless Packaging or The Colony of Slipperman. The lyrics that such vocals sing are meant to be a homage to classic author Agatha Christie, who on top of writing many detective novels, also wrote the murder mystery play and possibly the longest running West End show, The Mousetrap. As a matter of fact, I actually went and saw the play myself a few years ago. It was it was pretty good. And this song and its lyrical content sure certainly reflect Agatha's themes and styles. Almost like a parody of stuff of such. A dead body was found at the vicarage past nine o'clock, while people die from non-strokes. Must have, must, have been, must have been exposed to instant death disease, perhaps. Speaking of, I hope Major Mate is still okay. Don't think I've heard from him in a, him in a while. Hmm. The doctor's niece, whilst tending the rose hedge, was stung to death by a swarm of bees. Is this going to be like that My Girl film, is it? Does anyone else remember that film? I certainly do. Basically, it involves people dying from some rather humorous circumstances, like, my wife's cooking is out of this world, take a bite. Then he died from some rare tropical disease in the night, like it was food poisoning or something. The village vet was drowned in the pig's will. Pig's will basically meaning food wastes and other gross stuff that we feed to pigs. So, yeah, quite a pleasant way to go out, eh? The drums and percussion here are done by Chester Thompson, who, among working with the likes of Santana, Weather Report, and Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention, was also a Turing member for Genesis and for Concert's own solo concerts, usually taking over drums for Phil when he has to do some singing. And even here, Chester manages to emulate Phil's style while still having his own flavour to it, which may be why, why he, or why not, he would do drums for the rest of the songs in this album. But Steve would have him back for Genesis for Genesis Revisited in 1996, which consisted of reworked renditions of mostly Genesis songs from Steve's time as a member, with guest vocalists and musicians. In a way, this song, Carry, up, Carry On Up The Vicarage, is in some way a nursery crime. Then we have 
Racing in a... Racing in a what, exactly? Racing in a car? Racing in a boat? I don't know. Anyways, this is mostly a straightforward electric rocking track with even a little bit of what I think may be a Mellotron as well. Hopefully Hackett would continue to use that iconic instrument in his music and discography, right? Right? Anyway, Steve Walsh and Phil Ehard returned for respective vocals and drums here. The lyrics in question seem to deal with the feeling like you're overreacting and trying hard at things, so you need to get away from it all, to get out in the country. So many ways of seeking fortune, and on the highway, my thoughts are always racing away to the sun. As if his mind always goes to thinking about spending a lazy day or two just lying around in the warm country air beneath that sun. Then in the last minute and a quarter, the electric guitars, drums and mellotrons are all eschewed for a classical guitar that sells down the pace and mood and eventually closes the song altogether. As if the mind itself had finally stopped rushing and has now slowed down and relaxed. It reminds me a little bit of something like After the Ordeal from Selling England by the Pound. After that is the simply titled Kim. Obviously named after Kim Poor, of course. Who else would it be named after? Kim Jong-il? Kim Possible? Kim Kardashian? <laughs> this is a short and mainly acoustic instrumental piece, with Steve Hackett himself playing on his usual classic guitar, and his brother playing the flute. And I think he does just as well as Pierre Gabriel did during his time with Genesis. If I didn't know any better, I would have sworn it was indeed Peter himself playing that flute. The music itself, especially in its first few chords, were influenced by Gymnopedia's number one by French composer and pianist Eric Satie. I probably butchered those words wrong. I'm not a big French person. But not unlike how Steve's song Horizons from Foxtrot was heavily inspired by Johann Sebastian Bach's Cello Suite number no. one. You may not know the the Gymnopédiaires, specifically Gymnopédia number no. 1 by title, but if you want to listen to it, you would certainly recognise it. I'm sure you can find it around here on YouTube. Anyway, like Horizons, Kim is a very chill and soothing track that is worth listening to, especially if you're out in the back garden, if you don't have a garden, in a nice warm spring or summer while having a nice, good cup of tea or some other drink. It is short, simple and soothing. Side 1 ends with How Can I? Another simple and light-hearted acoustic heavy piece, this time featuring the gifted voice of the late great talented folk, soul and blues singer Richie Havens. The members of Genesis were all admirers of the old chap, and they even wanted him to be their opening act for several concerts back in 1977, to which he happily took up the offer. Then later at some point, Steve invited him over for dinner and to have him sing lead vocals for one or two songs of his here, again to which Richie happily took upon. The local says sorry, time to go, but I don't sleep too well. He probably should have taken those sleeping pills in advance, but now, deep in the bosom of the gentle night is when he searches for the light, but of course, he can't get no sleep. Where are those southern bells? I think they were told to go west with a young man like their family said. Richie then carries on singing about trying to get a telephone line through South Caroline and how you may bring down someone for miles around. Well... Give it some time, Richie. We're living in twilight, after all. The song, especially with its mention of South Carolina, does give off a bit of an American blues influence, which is interesting, interesting since Steve's music, both here and during his time in Genesis, had mostly an English or European folk vibe, emphasised in something like 
selling England by the pound. Mother Nature never gives in. She wants you to sing, but how can I just keep on singing this song? I mean, she keeps requesting me to sing Gangnam Style over and over, and it's just getting on my nerves. Money won't help you win a new look at things. But it is a crime, though, so don't try to take a piece of my pie. Loving can bring you down so you fall. So... Is that why the Jedi forbid falling in love and stuff? Anyways, How Can I is a, is a near-perfect marriage of American blues music and British folk music, up there with the likes of The Animals and Fleetwood Mac.